Hello, Michael here from Small Robot Studio with another RenderMan 23 tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at how to create these gemstones uh, with uh, RenderMan. I'm going to be using a mesh that I made in a previous tutorial. If you want to find out how I did that with Houdini, you can go back and look at that. Um, so to begin with, so the first thing I'm going to do is import my geometry. Now you can use any geometry you wish um, for this tutorial, but obviously I'm going to use the one that I already made. Um, so we're going to be working mainly in the Hypershade Editor, so I'm going to bring that up. I've got a dock to the right hand side here. If you don't, you can if you wish, otherwise just click that button and it'll bring it up. Um, we were going to create a couple of lights to begin with. We'll start with this Pixar Light 1, and I'm just going to look through Selected and line it up with my mesh. Lighting in this tutorial is quite important because we're going to be de dealing a lot with refraction and subsurface scattering. So it can be a little bit difficult to get your um, any glass objects to be lit nicely, particularly when you're blending in subsurface scattering as it tends to get a bit out of control. Um, but um, I'll show you a couple of things that you can do to help light your subject. All right, that will do for now until we get the uh, materials added. Might just increase the value of our left side light, which could be considered our um, rim light. Could actually be considered our key light as well. How do I think about it? It's probably more of a key and the one on the right is more of a fill. Um, that should be okay. So what we're gonna do to start off with is select our mesh and add a Pixar surface shader to it. I'll just remap that. We're gonna create the bump map to begin with and I'll visualize that in the diffuse material to start with. So we're gonna use an RS, uh, a Pixar Curve Cheer node, just tab to search that and we'll run that into the diffuse color. So what you'll see here is that the edges are turned white um, and I'm going to increase the cosine spread a little bit, bias it a little bit to the right and then increase the output gain to 2.0 so we can really see those edges. This curvature is going to be used as a mask um, for a fractal that we're going to add in. So we'll just pull that out for now and we'll create our PXR fractal. Run the result RGB into the diffuse color. And you'll see we get this effect. I am going to make it fairly complex looking because what this is going to be is the damage sort of in variation along the edge points where you saw the curvature before. So we're going to do a um, PXR blend. We're going to blend the um, fractal into the bottom and then run the curvature result RGBR into the bottom alpha. And then we can see this by running it into the diffuse color. And we'll set this to multiply and the top color to white. So now you'll see that the edges have got this um, difference happening between, so it's not just straight black it's and straight white, it's got some variation in between them. And what I'm gonna do here is create a PXR remap node. And this is just gonna allow us to get a bit more gain out of this um, fractal, which you can see is only sort of going to about a gray or 0.5 in value. So with this in, um, we will actually reduce the gain, which will give us more dark colors. And we're doing this because this is gonna be our bump map. All right, so we've got some nice contrast there now. Okay, we'll hook our blend of those two colors to give us an edge into a PXR bump. Uh, we'll run the result RGBR into the input bump and then the result N into the bump normal on your Pixar surface. Then we can disconnect that from the RGB. And then I'm gonna bump the dark areas in by changing the value to negative 0.1. Now hopefully this is visible in YouTube but um, the dark areas are being bumped in um, and the white areas are not. Now this is um, over the top at the moment and we'll probably back this 
bubble map off quite a bit once we um, start rendering the refraction because this will become uh, very very obvious when you're refracting light through it and I can show you that very quickly as we go to the diffuse uh, lobe turn the diffuse off and then go down to glass and turn the refraction gain up and the reflection gain up so you can sort of see how we're going to run into some issues uh, with these highlights and these um, uh, lights depending on the angle of the camera it's going to become very highlighted so we're going to have to really play with our um, material and our lights to get them to balance out between each other so we'll just disable our bump for the moment and we're going to create another Pixar fractal. You can any, use any noise generator that you wish. You could use a, a Voronoise if you'd prefer. Actually I am going to use a Voronoise here because I think it gives me more of what I'm looking for in this smoky sort of effect. I think I'm going to have to create, increase the gain on that. So we'll use a remap again here and run the result RGB into the um, input RGB and the result RGB into the diffuse and then we'll adjust you may have to rerun your render I want some really nice high contrast here okay that should do it so now we're going to use a ramp to control um, where this is being displayed on our uh, gem so we can use a Pixar ramp and I'll just run that into the diffuse so we can see what's happening and make sure that the first color is black and then we will realize that we haven't UV'd this so we'll just quickly go and UV planar that just the default should work fine if you've already got UVs obviously you won't need to do that okay, and now when we run that um, IPR we'll see that the ramp needs to be set to T um, and that way we can make the black come from the bottom I'll just leave it there for now so in a similar way to how we blended the curvature with the other fractal um, we're going to use a Pixar blend all right so what we'll do is we'll run our Pixar ramp into the top RGB and our Voronoise into the bottom RGB and we'll just set those to multiply and then when we render you'll see that um, the ramp is covering part of our uh, smoky effect which is essentially working as a um, mask in this point now we want the smoke to be on the bottom so we're going to reverse that and we get that sort of effect so this is going to be our subsurface scattering and we'll move some of these other things out of the way that we don't need anymore so this bump map just move down here so what we're going to be dealing with here is the single scatter we're not going to be using the um, subsurface which is quite a more, bit more involved single scatter is fairly easy to set up so we're just going to go with that so with our blend node what we want to do is run our result RGBR into our single scatter gain which is here we can just do that by plugging it into that yellow dot there and then finding single scatter gain and we can just connect it from the diffuse and turn the diffuse gain off because we don't need it so now we can just see the scattering and we're going to increase its presence by running that result RGBR again into the yellow input which is the all input and we're going to plug the other one into the single scatter direct gain and this is just going to help the presence of the um, single scattering now to make it obvious what we're working with here is I'm just going to change this color to red so you should be able to see the single the scattering now and I'm probably going to have to increase the light intensity that will help so you should be able to see the smoky hopefully uh, depending on what YouTube does to the compression uh, you should be able to see the smokiness there a little bit uh, we can make that a little bit more present though I'm going to turn the um, single scatter color down to be black and the mean free path color will keep as white and I think we're going to need some more gain in this Voronoise so we're going to use a um, 
Well, actually, we could use we could put the gain. Yeah, we'll put the gain in there first. So let's use another remap. Just place it in between the Voronoi's and the blend, and then we'll adjust the gain so we can see that a bit better. Okay, so it's starting to have the effect I want. It's difficult to see the topology, obviously, obviously because there's no background. But if I added in a dome light, it would be nearly impossible to read this. So that's okay for the moment. We'll turn our bump map back on so we can see that's impact on what we're about to do, which is going to be the refraction. So we'll go to the glass lobe, increase the refraction uh, gain, and we'll start to see our gem a bit. I'm just going to turn that on so I can see where I am. And this is where the lighting comes in. What we need to do here to be able to see these faces is to get the lights to sort of reflect off of them a bit. We don't actually have any reflection technically in it at the moment. We're getting refraction, so it's giving us a little bit of highlights. But as we increase reflection gain, you'll see we get a lot more. This is a bit too much though. Um, and we'll want to reduce the roughness as we work with the reflection. So I'm going to use the primary, primary specular to deal with reflection. I'm going to keep the face color at um, white and then change the roughness to be zero. Because we've got some roughness already in the surface, it's not too bad and um, that the edge damage will kind of work as roughness. You can make a roughness mat um, specifically if you wanted to, but this should be fine. Um, so what I'll do is I'm going to use the regular viewer and this way I can move the lights around a bit. So I'm going to set my camera up to be at about a um, 45 odd degree angle so we can see the whole gem and then I'll set up the lights we'll save that as a bookmark and then I'm going to look through the first light which is the light on the left and I'm going to aim that at the face so you can see it's basically covering the entire face plane and what we'll do is we'll increase the scale of it um, to say 3.5 that should cover the whole face yep and then we're going to work with the gain or the intensity so it's just giving us an indication of where the face actually is 0.05 should be okay. Um, I'm going to make this light warm, so 3500K, maybe a bit more, less warm, 4550. Okay, that should multiply nicely with our internal um, colors. And then the other light, we will make um, a, a cooler color. So we'll look through the second light. Okay, so I'm just going to make this light um, slightly overhead um, and set it to an 8500K, which is a nice cool color. And its scale could possibly do to be a bit larger. So we'll change that to 4. Yeah, that's working nicely. We just need to move it slightly. So we're getting those rooms now this obviously is going to transmit through the light uh, through the geometry um, and hit the back edges as well so just bear that in mind that's looking okay though so we'll work with that for the moment our bump map looks incredibly bumpy so we might want to pull that back a bit we'll change our bump map to be 0 0.01 negative 0.01 and the curvature distance to be 0.05 that should tighten up those corners a little bit now I want to make the color of this slightly more interesting at the moment it's just set to red which is fine if you want a solid color but we can change that to be a bit more interesting um, what we'll do is we will plug in a ramp into the direct color and I'll just set this to blue and say 
green so we can see the immediate effect so this is going into direct gain tint so I run that into the yellow input and it's under single scatter direct gain tint make sure this is a T ramp and then you can see the way that that is working now we can make the noise um, a little bit more interesting if we blend this ramp with a fractal and we can do that just by creating a fractal I'll um, just make a random sort of color and then create another blend node the ramp can go into the top and the fractal can go into the bottom we'll set that to multiply and we'll run the result RGB into the uh, single scatter direct single scatter direct gain tint and then as you adjust this you'll see that it has an impact on the shape of our cloudy formation on the inside so you can do some quite interesting things there just by mixing two different noises together like that you could also run the fractal result f into the spline map of your ramp to get some very unusual results um, that may be what you're after if you're going to do this i would put the same color on either side of your ramp and that way you'll just get a slightly better blend so you could do something like that now currently our refraction is not colored you could color it if you wish and that way any light refracted through it will have a tint um, and you can just make that similar to one of the colors that you're using on the inside so it makes sense maybe use a slightly less saturated version of it and because we've got um, a very bumpy surface what we can use is an ambient occlusion uh, or in this case it'd be Pixar Dirt which is essentially ambient occlusion to affect our um, indented areas and make them rough so we can plug the Pixar Dirt result RGBR into the specular roughness now I've just changed that back so the um, spline map isn't being affected by the fractal because I think it looks a little bit nicer in this case so I'm just going to make it a nice blend from green to purple which is actually the colors that my band from when I was in my early 20s used to use so there you go um, now if you want the overall interior to be a little bit more hazy um, you can actually increase the interior uh, extinction uh, under the glass lobe so we could increase that we'll actually need to increase the single scatter albedo and we can change that to whatever color we want you know it could be red and then we get some interesting mix there and then the extinction will increase the uh, value there in this case so you can get some interesting results that way so that way you don't just have a clear glass color and you can again run more different noises into your extinction um, so we could just grab our fractal from here run it into extinction and then we get a noise applied to that so rather than being a solid red color it's going to be slightly noisy and randomized that's it for this tutorial if you found it useful make sure you leave a like so other people can find it and if you haven't already make sure you subscribe as we're bringing out cg and illustration tutorials every week just like this one become a patron and access tutorial assets bonus content a private discord and more by clicking the link below